this video, we're going to take a quick look at journals and their options so that when we use them throughout the course, we know exactly what we're looking at. Let's go into configurations and under the subheader accounting, we'll go into journals. I'm going to click on the new button here and we're going to see that we can enter a journal name and this journal name can be anything. Under type here, we can select different types so we can have sales journals, purchase journals, cash journals, bank journals, and miscellaneous operations. So unless specifically mentioned here, we're going to use miscellaneous operations for anything that's not specifically entered. One thing to note is for bank, we would use bank for credit cards and bank accounts. Cash will be used for any cash handling. For example, if you have a drawer or a POS system that has a particular drawer that you want to manage the cash input and output, you would use cash here. Or if you're accept accepting cash payments and you want to keep a separate cash journal, you can absolutely do that as well. For purchases, is going to be for any purchases that we might make. Odoo will automatically create a purchase and sales journal for us. But if you want to have different journals for maybe different customers or specifically for intercompany transactions, which we'll look at later on in this course, you may elect to create additional sales and purchasing journals. Now, each type is going to have different settings. So in sales, the first thing we're going to look at is this journal entries and the accounting information. We're going to need a default income account that's going to be defaulted to this account when a new invoice is created. Of course, you can override it or have other settings, for example, on the product that has a specific income account. But if there's no product or maybe you're just creating a one-off entry, this is the default account that will be used. This dedicated credit sequence is going to allow us to set a sequence for our credit notes that is different from the sequence used to identify a particular invoice. Under our short code here, we can give this a short code to reference throughout the database. So instead of a long name here for maybe invoices, we might just say INV. And maybe if we're using this for intercompany, we say INVIC for intercompany. One helpful hint is that if you're unsure of what something does, you can hover over it and there may be an explanation under this question mark. For example, under this dedicated credit sequence, it says check this box if you don't want to share the same sequence for invoices and credit notes made from this journal. Now, if you're unfamiliar with Odoo, I don't expect you to know what all of this means when I'm saying it, but later on, you'll be able to use this context that I'm providing in order to follow along with the other parts of the demonstration and course. Now, under advanced settings here, we're going to see first some control access. We can set allowed accounts that can be used. So we can set different accounts that can be used in this journal. We can lock posted entries with a hash. This makes sure that you can never undo a journal entry. You would always have to create an additional journal entry if you want to reverse it. Particularly helpful for any highly regulated industries. Under this create invoices upon emails, this allows you to set an email alias that when emailed to, automatically creates an invoice inside of our customer invoices. The same thing is true for vendor bills as well. So let's say you attach a PDF to an invoice via email, or rather an, an invoice on a, that's a PDF through email, you can configure an email alias here, and that'll allow you to email in that email and that will create a record in Odoo that will be actionable. Under our payment communications, we have our communication type, which is going to be based on the invoice, customer, or open. All this does is set the default uh, communication uh, identifier inside of the customer invoice to either say customer or invoice. So our payment reference will say, you know, customer-7 or invoice-123, so that if we're searching for it, we can either search by customer code or invoice code. And this is also particularly interesting when we're talking about reconciliation models. We don't have to worry too much about that right now. To the right here, we have follow customer payments. This allows us to schedule an activity on the due date of a payment for ourselves or for someone else. 
so that we can be notified when the payment is due to make sure that we follow up. So if I select email here, it's going to say the user that I want to select and then the activity summary, for example, follow up with customer about the invoice that's due. So let's move on here and look at purchase. Under purchase here, we have very similar default expense account, dedicated credit note sequence, a short code, and under advanced settings, we just have this control access here and the email alias. So very similar setup to sales. Now under cash, we have our default cash account. We're going to have a suspense account, which is going to allow us to post to this bank suspense account as an interim account until we fully reconcile a payment. We have a profit and loss account for any cash differences, specifically relating to point of sale. Or anytime you count cash, there might be slight differences in the cash that you're counting versus what you're registering. Very common and end of the day register counting in point of sale. And then we have our short code and our dedicated payment sequence. Under incoming payments, we can set the payment types. Most of this is going to be manual as it's just cash. Same thing as outgoing. And this just allows us to register the different types of payments that we're receiving. This is more interesting when we get to banks, which we'll explain in just a few minutes. Under advanced settings here, we also have the control access for allowed accounts. Next, we have our bank accounts. And for this example, let's go into the default bank account that's created for us. We have our accounting information, our default bank account here. So this is going to be our primary account. So this might be Chase 4567. Our suspense account, which again is going to be used as an interim account to post our bank statement lines to our bank suspense account until we reconcile it with the payment or invoice or bill inside of Odoo. We have our profit and loss account, so our cash difference gain and loss account. Same concept as our cash type journals. And we have our dedicated sequence, a short code. And then to the right here, more interestingly, we have our bank feeds. So we can do an automated bank synchronization, which we'll cover in detail, which allows us to automatically pull in our bank statement lines. We have a manual bank statement where we can import our bank statements or create them manually. Or we can leave it undefined if we're not yet sure. Under our account number here is where we're going to set our bank account number and it's an accompanying bank account information. This is where you're going to set everything related to this bank, which is going to be utilized if we're doing things like NACHA payments. It's also helpful when we're doing bank to bank transfers from our own company. Under incoming payments, we have manual, we have batch deposits. Under outgoing payments, we have manual checks, NACHA. So for NACHA files, right, we're going to, you know, it's automated ACH that we can upload a file to our bank account, which we're going to cover in detail later on. With all of our NACHA configurations down below, we have our checks, which can be numbered manually if we so choose. And what this all allows us to do is that when we create a uh, payment, if we create, let's say, a payment, register a payment inside of a customer invoice, we're going to be able to say we're paying, we're receiving this payment via batch deposit or we're manually receiving it one off. And this is just a name. We can name it anything. Rather, this is manual. This is the name here. More interesting, under outgoing payments, we might elect to send the check to our vendor or we might send a NACHA file to our bank account to batch all of our payments together. And inside of Odoo, we're going to have to register a payment and tell the system, how are we going to process this payment? And this is what all of this um, is relevant to. Under advanced settings here, again, we have the access control. Finally, under miscellaneous operations, our journal entries, we have our default account, a short code, 
Under advanced settings, we have our allowed account and whether or not we want to lock these posted entries. We looked at this bank account as a quick example of one that was al already generated for us by Odoo, but there are several different accounts or different journals rather that are going to be generated for us based on our localization. We have our customer invoices, which is going to route all of our sales through this customer invoice journal. Vendor bills, same concept. We have miscellaneous operations that are just for one-off journal entries inside of accounting journal entries. Our inventory valuation journal entries, especially interesting if we're using automated inventory valuation, where we're going to allow the system to automatically update our balance sheet based on the product moves throughout our system. This is going to be utilized. We have our exchange differences for any exchange differences that might occur. And then we have our bank account, cash, point of sale, and cash basis taxes. So that's a general look at some of our journals. And again, if you go to your dashboard, you'll see a list of all your favorite journals. And if you remove that filter, you'll see all of your journals. We're gonna review this in detail, but that's just to create some context around the different settings in our accounting journals.